Kelp noodle is the best noodle substitute. If you're looking for a low-carb noodle with a texture similar to glass noodles, this is it. It has been my go-to substitute for many Asian dishes and noodle soups. Do you ever wonder how it's made? Today I'm going to show you how to make it, how to store it, and how to soften it. First, let's look at the two brands I normally purchase. The Sea Tango brand is $6.29 versus the Korean brand Wang is $2.79 per bag. Why is there a price difference? The ingredients for the Korean brand is sodium alginate, water, and salt. The ingredients for the American brand is water, kelp, and sodium alginate. Well, there's our answer. It's in the ingredients. The American brand has kelp as one of the ingredients, and the Korean brand does not. Sea tango is basically a term for any variation of brown seaweed. Since sodium alginate is a sodium salt extracted from a brown seaweed, it is considered a sea tangle product. For products to be labeled as kelp, it must have kelp as an ingredient, since kelp is more specific. Notice both of these noodle packages contain some sort of liquid inside. That's the liquid reserved from the calcium bath. Based on the ingredients, the common ingredient used here is sodium alginate. This tells me it's a molecular gastronomy recipe, since sodium alginate is used for culinary verification. Molecular gastronomy is basically food science, using techniques from chemistry and physics to make edible creations. This term is credited to both Hervé Thies, a physical chemist, and Nicholas Curti, a former professor of physics at the University of Oxford. In this recipe, you will need kelp powder. You can skip it and mix sea tangle noodles instead, but kelp is high in iodine and also has other health benefits. The FDA recommends a dietary intake of 150 micrograms of iodine per day, and 1 8 teaspoon of this kelp powder provides 422 micrograms of iodine. This one pound bag will make about 90 recipes, with each recipe serving two to four servings. Sodium alginate is the key ingredient. This is what makes the mixture thicken and react to the calcium water bath to set and form the food creations. For the calcium water bath, you will either need calcium chloride or calcium lactate. Calcium chloride is a salt made up of one molecule. It is used for pickling, beer making, and cheese making. Calcium lactate is also a calcium salt used primarily as a food additive or as a dietary supplement. Using a high-speed blender, add in 3 cups of filtered water. Start the blender on low speed and add in half a tablespoon of kelp powder. You can use less if you wish or skip it altogether. Keep the blender running and increase the speed to high and add in a quarter teaspoon of sea salt and two tablespoons of sodium alginate. Continue blending until all the alginate has dissolved and thickened. There will be lots of air bubbles. Transfer the mixture to a bowl and refrigerate 30 minutes to one hour to allow the bubbles to settle. In the meantime, prepare the calcium bath by adding 7 cups of filtered water to a bowl. Add in 1 tablespoon of calcium chloride or calcium lactate and mix the solution until the calcium salts are completely dissolved. In this video, I'm making both to show you the difference since I had both calcium salts in my pantry. You will need to only make one water bath. When the bubbles have settled, it's time to make the noodles. If there are still some bubbles on top, gently remove it and allow it to settle further in a smaller bowl. Transfer the kelp mixture into a squeeze bottle. You will need to refill it a few times to use up the mixture. Next, squeeze the kelp mixture into the calcium bath with one hand while the other hand is stirring the calcium bath in a circular motion with either a spoon or a whisk. The noodles will form and set. Continue until all the mixture have been used up. And if you have kids, let them help you. 
They will love making these noodles. This recipe makes about 560 grams of kelp noodles. This is almost double the amount of store-bought kelp noodles for a fraction of the price. With homemade kelp noodles, you have the option to make thin or thick noodles just by controlling the pressure when squeezing the bottle. Now that the noodles are made, I will show you how to store it and soften it. It makes a huge difference to soften the kelp noodles before using it for your cooking. To store it, transfer it to a container with a lid and add in the kelp noodles. Add some of the liquid from the calcium bath to keep it fresh, just like the store-bought brands. Refrigerate for later use. To soften it, just add hot tap water to a bowl, just enough to cover the kelp noodles. You do not need to boil the water, although it can be an option. Add about 2 tablespoons of lime juice or lemon juice to the bowl and then about 1 tablespoon of baking soda. There will be a chemical reaction and the noodles will start to soften. This will only take a few minutes depending on how hot the water is. Keep an eye on it and do not over soak it. When it is soft to your liking, discard the liquid and strain the noodles using a sieve. Rinse the noodles a few times and drain out the excess water by leaving it in a sieve on the counter or in the refrigerator. Use this homemade kelp noodles for all your favorite noodle dishes and noodle soups. Thank you for watching everyone! Please like, comment, and subscribe to Keto Asian Flavors for authentic, fusion, and fun food creations. See you next time!